Hello girls, good morning. Okay, in previous lessons, we have already seen the topic of uh, absorption, where the digested nutrients, which in the simplest form, that means the glucose and the amino acids plus fatty acids and glycerol, um, they enter the lacteal and also uh, through the blood capillaries to be transported to all parts of the body. Okay, now in today's lesson, we're going to look at this topic called assimilation. Uh, what does it mean by assimilation? We want to see that what actually happens to these digested nutrients. Where is it going to go? How is the body going to make use of it? Okay, first of all, let's look what is the meaning of assimilation. Okay, you will see this topic, assimilation. Now, assimilation in biology means the process which uh, through which an organism incorporates the nutrients from outside its body. Incorporate means use it. How is this... Uh, nutrients that are already absorbed into the bloodstream going to enter the body uh, going to enter the body cell and how is it going to be utilized or how is it going to be used by the cell to perhaps produce energy through process of respiration or perhaps to be used to make new cells to make protein to make uh, plasma protein and so on in the cell itself so the process of making use of it, incorporating or bringing the nutrients from outside the cell into the cell and using it is called assimilation. All right. So the simplest form of life forms, that means the single cell, will do this through the direct intake through the cell wall, through the process of diffusion. But of course, in uh, multicellular organisms, you will need a more complicated, more complex uh, process. Okay, we, uh, it goes through a few more stages. All right, now let's look at assimilation here. Okay, the role of circulatory system. The human circulatory system consists of the blood circulation system and the lymphatic system to help transport nutrients to be assimilated. So in the assimilation process that occurs in the cells, the nutrients are used to form complex compounds. For example, plasma protein okay, or the plasma membrane to make new components like organelles in the cell okay, to make new parts or the structures of the components and there are two pathways as you remember in the previous lesson there are two pathways one is through the blood capillaries the absorption of the nutrients is through the blood capillaries the other one is through the lacteals okay so first of all let's look at the blood capillaries after the food the, the digested nutrients are absorbed okay for example now what remember what goes into the blood capillaries you have the soluble water-soluble substances like amino acids. You also have the glucose and all the simple sugar, uh, glucose, galactose, and fructose. And also, uh, yeah, these are the, and also vitamins, vitamins B and C, they are all water-soluble. So this will enter the blood capillaries. Now, where does it go from there? After entering the blood capillaries, where does it go from there? Let's look at this picture, which I've taken from a website. Okay, now if you look at this diagram. If you look at this diagram. This shows the small intestines, the ileum, the last part of it. Oh, sorry, this is not the small intestines, right? I'm sorry, this is the large intestines. Okay, here the small intestines here. Okay, so these are the small. This is the small intestine, intest small intestines. And you have the nutrients being absorbed here, okay? So this vein, all right, this vein is going to join up to a major vein called the hepatic portal vein, okay? Here, hepatic portal vein is the vein which actually collects all the digested nutrients from the ileum. So after absorption, all the nutrients that are absorbed from the small intestines will converge into a large vein called a hepatic portal vein. So this is the one. And you see where it leads to? It leads to the liver. So it leads to the liver. And so liver is a place where you process the digested nutrients. And it's a, it's a storehouse, it's, it's a warehouse to store all the nutrients which are not released into the bloodstream at that uh, particular time. That is uh, the nutrients which are not needed to be released out at that time. Okay, so let's go back to here. So this is the hepatic portal vein. Okay, so if a question asks you which is the blood vessel which contains the most 
or the highest amount of digested nutrients okay which is the vein which contains the highest amount of digested nutrients that just came from dig uh, absorption so the answer would be hepatic portal vein this one hepatic portal vein okay let's go back to here now that is from the blood capillaries what about from the lacteals the lacteal absorbs do you remember what it absorbs all right Lacteal absorbs fatty acids, fatty acids, and also glycerols, and also the vitamins which are lipid soluble, which is A, D, E, and K. Okay, so these are the substances which enter the lacteal, and they are not going to join up to the hepatic portal vein. They instead join another duct. They will join another uh, system, which is called the lymphatic system. It goes to the lymphatic system, and the lymphatic system all will join up together to enter a large duct, a large tube or vessel, which is called the thoracic duct. Okay, let's look at the picture here. All right, so you will see here. This is where the uh, lymphatic vessels are joined to the. Uh, small intestines with the lacteals so they are not they, they don't show the lacteals here so imagine this is a lymphatic vessel which collects all the fatty acid and uh, vitamin a d e and k and also glycerol so they're going to join to a major one uh, this one is called the thoracic duct so remember this is a separate system from the blood capillary so it's going to join to this thoracic duct and it's going to go up all right it goes against gravity it goes up and it's going to look at this it's going to pour back the contents of the lymph lymph the contents are known as lymph to pour back into the bloodstream so it enters through this one this is called a subclavian vein this is a vein which returns blood back to the heart this is a vein eh? vein returns blood back to the heart and uh, it's actually just below your show, uh, collarbone collarbone so this blood, uh, sorry, this lymph actually joins back into the blood. So it returns back the lymph into the circulatory system. Okay, you will see this more in detail uh, in the next few chapters, in the next uh, one or two chapters later on. So here you have the thoracic duct which collects all the um, fatty acid and the lipid droplets and the glycerol and the vitamin A, D, and K, A, D, E, and K. And they're going to pour back into the bloodstream later on. So this is where they join back. Okay, the vein is called subclavian vein, and the duct is called thoracic duct. So this is what happens, huh? Okay. So there's another one which is actually uh, you will see it later. There is going to be another right subclavian vein. So this is the left subclavian vein. The one the the one that thoracic duct joins back is called the left subclavian vein. Yeah, we will see the other ones later. Huh? We do not want I do not want to confuse you at this moment. So we just concentrate on where this. Uh, nutrient that is that, uh, absorbed from the lacteal goes to. So all you will need to remember, it, it ends up in the thoracic duct and it goes back and is, uh, is poured back into the uh, sub left subclavian vein. Okay, so let's go back to your notes here. Right, okay. So lacteals combine to form bigger lymph vessels in the lymphatic system and then the contents of these lymph vessels will enter the thoracic duct and then later on, it's pours back into the left subclavian vein. And then this lipid is then transported by blood throughout the body. Okay, next, uh, let's look at the function of liver. So you see that the liver is the a place where all the nutrients will go in. This is the first stop shop, okay, where all the uh, digested and absorbed nutrients will first stop at your liver. So liver is a processing center. So it is a regulator that controls what needs to be kept inside and what needs to enter the blood capillary system, uh, blood capillary, uh, circulatory system. So it's like a place to control, okay, how much I need to release out the nutrients and how much I need to keep inside to be kept for later use. So let's, add, let's look at the uh, function, okay. Uh, how is it used? Huh? Okay, metabolism of digestive food. So glucose is used, as you know, for cellular respiration. We need the glucose to produce energy to the process called cellular aspiration. 
And amino acids will be used for making plasma protein and also enzymes, don't forget antibodies and also hormones. Okay. Then another uh, function, right, uh, through the, am the amination process, this happens in the liver. Extra or we call excess amino acids which are not utilized, which are not needed, the excess will be turned into urea. So this will go into the blood and later on pass on to the kidney to be excreted through the urine. Right, so this uh, is a place, liver is a place where we carry out the process called the amination. So basically the amination is you take out the amino group from the amino acid. So as you learned earlier in uh, the, the molecule of amino acids, you have different parts of it. You have the carboxyl and then you also have the uh, amino group. So the amino group is taken out from the molecule and it makes your amino acids um, viable to be used as a glucose uh, to be to produce energy later. So what is taken out will be formed into urea and urea is toxic. So it has to be excreted through the urine. Okay, third one, liver also carries out detoxification. Okay, in Mandarin we say tie du. Tie du means you take out the drug, take out the poison from the substance. So liver ex, uh, liver cells expel, expel means throw away toxic substances from the blood. Okay, so that makes uh, it, uh, of course, better for our blood to be clean, cleansed and we have uh, blood which is less toxic right, every time you pass through the liver. So liver carries out the process of that. Toxic substances are expelled through the urine. Okay, so this is transported to the kidney. Another uh, function of uh, liver is to uh, store nutrients. And excess glucose, glucose that we do not need at the moment. For example, you ate too much, you had a lot of you have a lot of glucose in your blood. Okay, so we do not release it all at once. So most of the extra glucose will be converted and kept in the form of glycogen. It will be stored in your liver cells, it's also stored in your muscle cells. Okay, let's look at another uh, function. Uh, this I've got from the internet. So this is a uh, more comprehensive. So liver is metabolically active organ responsible for many life forms. The primary functions of the liver are bile production. Okay, don't forget producing bile and also excreting bile. Okay, excretion of bilirubin, cholesterol, hormones and drugs. Okay, so this is detoxification. Okay, bilirubin. Let's look at what's bilirubin. Bilirubin is the substance which is formed from the breakdown of red blood cells, okay? So this uh, when you rip all red blood cells, which are not needed, will be broken down in the liver. So when it's, once it's broken down in the liver, you're gonna per, uh, it's gonna produce a substance called bilirubin. This bilirubin is a uh, substance which is a waste product. So it's gonna pass through the liver and it's eventually excreted out of the body through the feces. Okay, so that's why this is the characteristic color that gives the yellow color in your feces. Okay, in the in the papian, right? So bilirubin, a brownish yellow bile, a yellow pigment uh, of bile found in the bile. It is secreted by liver, and it gives the color, uh, the solid, the the feces color, the characteristic color which is yellow and brown, uh, okay? yellow and brown. So it is the end product of red blood cell or we call hemoglobin breakdown. So our red blood cells actually will get to be renewed every uh, about hundred and twenty days. So the life cycle of red blood cell is about 120 days. Okay, so another definition of uh, bilirubin is an orange-yellow pigment that occurs when part of your red blood cells break down. Your liver takes the bilirubin from your blood and changes its chemical makeup so that most of it is passed through your poop as bile, okay, as a yellowish-brownish color. Okay, so that is uh, bilirubin. So liver also carries out metabolism of fats, okay, uh, breaking down the fats, uh, so changing into other forms, proteins, uh, carbohydrates, and so on. Enzyme activation to activate enzymes. Liver is also a place to store your glycogen, vitamins and minerals. Okay, uh, iron, specifically you have a lot of iron in your liver. Okay, vitamins as well. Synthesis of plasma proteins such as albumin. Okay, this is found in the blood. And also clotting factors. Uh, this one we will see later in the next chapter. Blood detox detoxification, jetu, and also purification. Okay, so these are the functions of uh, the liver and this you see a common disease in the liver. This is called cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is actually hardening of the liver. Okay, the liver has been badly scarred and uh, 
one of the factors which actually cause cirrhosis is uh, toxic, uh, what we call the high contents of alcohol. So if you drink alcohol, you're actually putting a lot of stress on your liver because your liver has to detoxify the alcohol. So according to the liver, you know, alcohol is considered like a toxin. So your, it has to break down the substances in the alcohol. So your, your liver works over time and in the long run, it's you're going to actually harm the liver. So you have this cirrhosis or scarring of the liver. All right. Okay. So any problems, please ask me later. All right. Or you can uh, WhatsApp me. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the lesson.